Welcome, this is my instructional video for pre-calculus, uh, section 2.7, the graphing of rational functions. Okay, in the previous uh, section we talked about graphing rationals and finding roots and vertical asymptotes and all that sexy stuff. Now here's the, uh, when this says the guidelines, so this is the overall. So the definition of a rational function, f of x equals n of x divided by d of x, where n and d are polynomials with no common factors. So it's been reduced if that was possible at the beginning. Uh, find and plot the y-intercept by evaluating f of 0. So we're going to find, uh, uh, actually I'm not even going to do that. So that's like unimportant. Set the numerator equal to 0. That's going to find the roots. So this is finding the roots. And then we're going to set the denominator equal to 0. That's going to find the vertical asymptotes. And then we're going to find the horizontal asymptote. We're going to do that using the rule, where if the numerator is a lower degree polynomial than the denominator, then the asymptote is the x-axis, y equals 0. If the numerator and the denominator are the same degree polynomial functions, then the asymptote, the horizontal asymptote, will be y equals the ratio of the leading coefficients. Okay. And then the book says plot at least one point between and one point beyond each x-intercept and vertical asymptote. I'm going to say perform a sign analysis of the function. Okay, and I will demonstrate that in every problem. Now, I have a separate video that's all about doing sign analysis for these functions and more complicated ones because this is a cool calculus skill to be able to have in your hip pocket. And then draw smooth curves to complete the graph from the stuff you know. Okay, so there we go. Number one, sketch the graph by hand. So here we go, the roots. That's where the numerator equals 0, but the denominator doesn't. So, hey, x is a constant here. It's always 3. I'm sorry, it's not x. The numerator is 3, so it doesn't matter what x is. This is never 0. So there is no root. And then the denominator is 0 when x is equal to positive 2. So there's our vertical asymptote. So we're going to take our vertical asymptote here. We're going to drag it over to where x is positive 2. And the horizontal asymptote, since the numerator is a zero-degree polynomial, the numerator is a first-degree polynomial, that's going to be the x-axis where y equals zero. So there's our horizontal asymptote. So we have no roots. We have the vertical asymptote as shown and the horizontal asymptote as shown. And then I'm ready to do the sign analysis. Now, here's what happens. When you just look at this guy right here, the key points, and in calculus we'll call them kind of like the critical points, but not exactly the same. But the key points here are where we have a vertical asymptote and where we have a root. Those are our key points. So notice there's no root, but there's a vertical asymptote of 2. Now, look at the factor here. This is a linear factor x minus 2. What happens when I have x minus 2 as a function? So let's say y equals x minus 2. Well, because it's positive x, the line has positive slope. So the slope is 1, so it's positive. So it goes from negative infinity on the left to positive infinity on the right. And the root, where the function equals 0, is at 2. So notice that means when I'm to the right of 2, the function will be positive. Well, this part of the function, this factor, will be positive. And then over here, to the left of 2, this factor x minus 2 is going to be negative. That's everything. Oh, vertical asymptote, that means at this point here the function is undefined. And this is the meaning behind a uh, line graph, which is what I'm going to use for sign analysis. So the domain value is on the bottom of the line, and the range value, f of x, is on the top of the line. So when x is 2, the function is undefined. And since 3 is positive, whenever this factor is positive, a positive i by positive makes a positive. So anywhere to the right of 2, function f is positive. And then, since 3 is positive, whenever the factor in the denominator is negative, a positive i by negative will make a negative. There's a sign analysis. So that means on the as we get close to 2, we're going undefined. That means we're going to positive infinity or negative infinity. Well, the signs here say we're going to positive infinity on the right and negative infinity on the left. And the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. And there are no roots. So that asymptote's not crossed, because that's always a question, because functions may cross a horizontal asymptote. Now, they can't cross a vertical asymptote. 
Okay, but they may cross the horizontal asymptote, so you have to check for that. But the fact that the asymptote is the y-axis, or I'm sorry, the x-axis, where y is equal to zero, and we already know there are no roots, so there is no value for x that makes y zero here. So since there's no roots, as this guy comes up, it must come up and approach the horizontal asymptote from below. And as this guy comes down from positive infinity, it must come down and approach the horizontal asymptote from above. Because we know that asymptote's never crossed. Bam! There's our function. Function number two, same thing. So we set the numerator equal to zero, 2x minus 1 equals zero. That happens when x is 1 half. So we know there's a root at 1 half. So here I'm going to go 1 half, and that's going to be a root. And then when the denominator is zero, that's when x equals zero. So we know there's a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. So here we go. We bring our vertical asymptote across, and we label it that's when x is zero. And then the horizontal asymptote, since these guys are the same uh, degree, that uh, 2 divided by 1 is 2, so the horizontal asymptote is y equals 2. So I'm going to bring my horizontal asymptote down here, and I'm going to stop at where y equals 2. I'm ready to do my sign analysis. Now my key points are 0 and 1 half for my line graph. So 0 and 1 half. Again, this is a function with a positive slope, so that means it goes up to the right. And so the root is 0, and so it's negative to the left and positive to the right of 0. And this guy here, the root is 1 half, but the same thing, it's got a positive slope, so it's a slope of 2, so it goes up steeper. But still, at 1 half, it's going to be positive whenever I'm to the right of 1 half, negative whenever the domain value is to the left of 1 half. So to the left of 1 half, that factor is negative. To the right of 1 half, that factor is positive. And here's what's going on. So the 1 half is the root, so this is where the function is 0. And this is a vertical asymptote, so that's where the function is undefined. So there's my y values for the associated x values. And then over here, well, all these numbers here are to the left of the domain value of 0, that means this factor in the denominator is always going to be negative, and this factor in the numerator is also going to be negative. And a negative times a negative is a positive. And then in this interval here between 0 and 1 half, well, to the right of 0, this factor is going to be positive, but to the left of 1 half, this factor is negative. A positive times a negative is a negative. And then in these numbers here to the right of 1 half, or whenever the domain is greater than 1 half, we're to the right, so that's po that factor is positive. We're to the right of one half here, so that factor in the numerator is positive, and a positive divided by a positive is a positive. There's my sign analysis. So at zero, at the vertical asymptote, we're going to positive infinity on the left, negative infinity on the right. And then we have a zero, one half, and then the function is going to be positive. So the function is negative from zero up to one half. And then it's probably going to approach from below, but I have to check that still. And here, this guy's going to come down and approach to from above. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say, hey, does this function ever equal 2? That's the question. So 2 is equal to 2x minus 1 over x. So we multiply by an x on both sides, so we get 2x is equal to 2x minus 1. And that was to get rid of the fraction. And notice that our statement, it's logically inconsistent. So some number 2x is the same as that number 2x minus one more. So if you go on the number line and here's 2x, and then you go, well, i got to go down one. So this, this point here, when I go down one unit, this is 2x minus one. And the question is saying, what value for x makes these two guys equal to each other? Well, if you're here and you go one to the left, you're by definition not equal to here anymore. So the answer is never. So this is never true, which means the asymptote is not crossed. So that means for sure, fact now, not my opinion, or my guess, on the left side, the graph is going to approach the asymptote, horizontal asymptote from above. And on the right side, the graph is going to approach the horizontal asymptote from below. Because it can never equal the asymptote. That's what this proved right here.
Okay, so sketching this graph right here, so we have x over x squared minus x minus 2. We're going to rewrite the denominator in factored form. So here we go. The root is when the numerator is 0, but the denominator is not. That's going to be where x equals 0. And then the vertical asymptotes where the denominator is 0, but the numerator is not. So that's going to be at negative 1 and positive 2. And then the horizontal asymptote, since this is a one-degree polynomial and x times x is x squared, it's a second-degree polynomial. The numerator is a lower degree than the denominator, so that says, hey, the horizontal axis y equals 0. So there's a root at 0, which is the origin. There's a vertical asymptote at negative 1 and 2. We're going to call that one negative 1. We're going to call this one 2. It's about twice as much. And a horizontal asymptote at, x, at y equals 0, which is the x-axis. So this is negative 1. This is 2. And this was 0. And this is y equals 0. And we're ready to do the sign analysis. Now there's three key points, the negative 1, the 2, and the root of 0. So negative 1, 2, root of 0. So 0 is a root. Negative 1 and 2 are asymptotes, so that's where the function is undefined because we're trying to divide by 0 there. And then the sign analysis. All the factors are positive. Positive x plus 0, positive x minus 2, positive x plus 1. Everybody has a positive slope. So everybody goes up to the right. Wherever the root is, the function, so that factor is going to be positive to the right, negative to the left. So notice for each one of these, negative to the left, positive to the right of each factor or each root, or each point of interest, if you will. So this interval down here, negative times a negative is a positive times another negative makes a negative. In this interval, we're going to have a positive times a negative, which is a negative, times this negative, which is going to be a positive. And this interval here, we're to the right of 0 and negative 1, and we're to the left of 2. So we're going to have a positive times a positive times a negative, which is a negative. And then when to, we're the right, to the right of 2, we're to the right of every factor. And so we're going to have a positive times a positive times a positive, which is a positive. There's my complete sign analysis. So on the first vertical asymptote, we're going to be negative on the left, positive on the right. Second vertical asymptote. We're also going to be negative on the left, positive on the right. And the horizontal axis is the, uh, I'm sorry, the horizontal asymptotes, the x-axis. So that's when y equals 0. And basically, because we know there's only one root at 0, that's the only place that the horizontal asymptote crosses. So nowhere else does it cross. So that means right here, in the interval from negative infinity to negative 1, this guy, as we go out to the left, and x goes towards negative infinity, the function has to go towards 0 from below. And that means here to the right of 2, the function has to approach 2 from above. And in the middle, we're going to be negative infinity through the 0, and then going towards, I'm sorry, this is positive infinity, going through 0, then towards negative infinity. There's my graph. Okay, this guy right here, put in this guy in factor form. This is the difference of squares x plus 3, x minus 3. So the zeros that go with that are plus or minus 3. The difference of squares here, x plus 2, x minus 2. So those zeros that go with that are plus or minus 2. There we go. The roots are plus or minus 3. That's where the numerator is 0, but the denominator is not. And the vertical asymptotes where the denominator is 0, but the numerator is not. That's plus or minus 2. And since these guys are the same degree, when you multiply this out, you get 2x squared plus whatever the other stuff is. And we got 1x squared down here. They're the same degree, so it's the ratio of leading coefficients. 2 over 1 is 2. Bam. So the roots are negative 3, positive 3. Oh, that's a heck of a big dot. Okay. And then the vertical asymptotes are negative 2. And positive 2. And the horizontal asymptote is y equals 2. So this is negative 2 here. 
for the vertical asymptote, positive 2 for the vertical asymptote, and the horizontal asymptote is where y equals 2. And I'm ready to do the sign analysis. The three key points are going to be the two roots of the two vertical asymptotes. So negative 3, negative 2, positive 2, and positive 3 in that order from least to greatest. Bam. And each of these factors, when we write them out, so this is x plus 3, x minus 3. Hey, those are both positive slopes. And down here, x plus 2, x minus 2, same thing, positive slopes. Everybody, each factor is negative to the left of the root and positive to the right of the root. So the zeros are the threes. And the vertical asymptotes are the twos. So there's the value of the function at those points. And now the intervals between those points. So in the interval between negative 3 and negative 2, actually we're going to go to the left of negative 3. I'm to the left of everybody, so that's a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative. That is a positive. Then to the right of negative 3, we're going to have a positive times a negative times a negative times a negative. So those three negatives multiply to make a negative. In between negative 2 and 2, we're going to have a positive times a positive times a negative times a negative. So that's, those are going to make a positive times the other two positives are going to be a positive. And then in this interval right here, we're going to be to the right of all three of these guys and to the left of this one. So positive, positive, and a, a positive is a positive times a negative is a negative. And then when to the right of three, we're to the right of everybody, so we have three positives being multiplied. I'm sorry, four positives. No, three positives. Why did I do a negative here? Uh-oh. I think I got ahead of myself. Let's slow down and do that again. So this is a zero. This is a zero. This is undefined. Okay, in this interval here, we're to the left of everybody. So one, two, three, four negatives multiply to make a positive. In this interval, we're to the right of the negative three, but to the left of everybody else. Positive times the negative is a negative, times those two negatives make, say, negative. This interval here, I'm to the left of those two guys, so that's two positives, multiplied by, uh, actually, I'm to the right of these two guys, I think I said left. So it's going to be a positive times a positive, and then we have to the left of these guys a negative times a negative. All that makes a positive. And in this interval between 2 and 3, we're to the right of everybody, so that's going to be a positive times a positive times a positive there, but we're to the left of 3, so that's a negative, so that's going to be a negative. And then to the last interval, we're to the right of everybody, so everybody is a positive. Four positives multiply to make a positive. There we go. There's our sign analysis. So, undefined, we're going to have a 0 at 3 and negative 3, so those are marked. At negative 2, we have vertical asymptotes. We're going to be on the left one. We're going to be negative infinity on the left, positive on the right. Negative infinity on the left, positive on the right. Uh, the asymptote at positive 2, we're going to be positive on the right and negative on the left. Okay. And then the question is, can this guy ever equal 2? So, hey, can 2 times x squared minus 9 over x squared minus 4 Okay, it's supposed to be a minus 4 equal 2. Well, that means divide 2 out of both sides. x squared minus 9 over x squared minus 4 equals 1. So we multiply by x squared minus 4 on both sides. That means x squared minus 9 would equal x squared minus 4. And I don't care what number x is, but when you square it, that's going to give you a certain number on the number line. And then what we're saying is 1 unit, 9 units to the left of that could possibly be equal to just x squared. And the answer to that question is 
No, that's never going to happen. So I know the horizontal asymptote is never crossed. So my graph is going to look like this. And the interval from negative infinity to negative 2. This interval here between negative 2 and positive 2. Oh, where's the y-intercept? Put 0 here, 0 here. That's negative 18 over negative 4. That's a positive 9 over 2, which is 4.5. <laughs> oh. We got carried away with drawing. <sighs> so the answer is it can't equal the horizontal asymptote. So that means this is going to be a U shape above it. And since this is symmetric at negative 2 and positive 2, I assume the U is symmetric, so I just kind of put the vertex in the middle, kind of on the Y axis doesn't have to be that way I haven't verified that I'm just doing that for convenience of drawing and the last one is hey we're going towards po uh, we're coming out of negative infinity here we're going towards positive infinity. actually we're going towards the horizontal asymptote where y equals 2 so out of negative infinity through 3 comma 0 and then bend underneath here to never cross that there's my graph. Okay, last problem. And for some reason, I don't have the timer and all that for my screencast program, so I have no idea how long the video is. I'm thinking it's about 20, 25 minutes. I'll find out at the end, I guess. So we factor this guy here, x minus 2, x plus 1. This guy here is prime, so boom. So we have a vertical asymptote at 1. We have zeros at positive 2 and negative 1. So zeros, roots at positive uh, 2 and negative 1. The vertical asymptote at positive 1. Horizontal asymptote, the numerator is uh, greater than the denominator, so that's none. Now, here we go. So the root's negative 1 and 2. And the vertical asymptote is x equals 1. Okay. For some reason that wasn't separated. Okay. x equals 1. There we go. And the horizontal asymptote, none. We're going to leave that where it is for a second. Now, here's what's going on is when the numerator is a greater degree than the denominator, we can do long division. So we go x squared minus x minus 2 divided by x minus 1. We get x plus negative 2 over the divisor, which is x minus 1. Now here's the cool sexy thing. This is a fraction. And the and negative 2 would be the remainder. So basically, here's the thing. As x goes out to the right, because this part here by itself is a rational function. As x goes out to the right, x goes towards infinity, this guy approaches 0. That means it goes away. And if x goes out to the left and approaches negative infinity, again, this little fraction part goes to 0. So what's our asymptote? What's our end behavior? It's the line y equals x. Here's the line y equals x here in the books diagram. So I'm going to take in my diagram. I'm going to make this the line y equals x. So we're going through the origin with the slope of 1. And it looks pretty much like the slope of 1 right there. So here's our graph. Oh, we didn't do the, the um, sign analysis. So at 1, because this is going to be negative on the left, positive on the right. And the same thing's true up here. We got the uh, negative 1 and 2. I don't know why I don't have those here. But we should have negative 1 and 2. So negative 1 and 2 are zeros. And positive 1 is going to be a vertical asymptote. So that means the function is undefined. And sign analysis, all these guys. Uh, linear factors with a positive um, leading coefficient.
So they're all going to be negative on the left, positive on the right. Which means the interval here is three negatives, which makes a negative. The interval here is one positive times two negative. That's going to be a positive. The interval here is going to be two positives times one negative. That's going to be a negative. And the interval to the right of two is going to be one, two, three positives multiplied, which makes a positive. So the undefined for positive infinity on the left. Negative infinity on the right. So notice as we come up here at a negative infinity, we go through the root, which is two, and then we approach this line. And here we come out of positive infinity, go through the intercept. Well, that wasn't very good going through the intercept. Then approach this line. Bless it. And so there we go. That's the book drawing. Okay. That concludes my explanation. Best I can do. Oh, just to kind of fill in on here too if you had an x to the fourth plus some number doesn't matter what it is just so it's not factorable with the denominator and this is x squared whatever and there's no common factors here x to the fourth divided by x squared is going to be x squared plus some x plus that remainder thing that's going to go to zero so instead of your asymptote here being a line it will be a parabola Oh, crazy, man. This can get kind of wicked complicated, but just so you know. But notice here, long division is my friend. Long division helps me uh, analyze and see what's really going on underneath all these things. Okay, that's it. If you got questions, you should check me out for tutoring. Other than that, later.